35 countries from around the world are working together to construct a $65 billion machine in southern France that could revolutionize how we obtain energy. They call it ITER. In November 1985, at the Geneva Superpower Summit in Switzerland, General Secretary of the Soviet Union Mikhail Gorbachev proposed a collaborative international project to develop peaceful fusion energy to US President Ronald Reagan. Discussions ensued, and a year later, an agreement was reached. The EU, Japan, Soviet Union, and USA would jointly develop the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER. In 1988, conceptual design work began, and engineering design quickly followed. Then, in 2001, the final design for ITER was approved. The ITER fusion reactor will be located on a 0.42 square kilometer site in southeast France, just three kilometers east of Cadarache, the largest technological research and development center for energy in Europe. ITER will be the largest tokamak device in the world. A tokamak is a machine that has the shape of a torus, or a donut, with a central chamber that contains the fuel. ITER will eventually use a mix of deuterium and tritium gases as fuel, isotopes of hydrogen. Deuterium, which can be distilled from seawater in significant amounts, is virtually inexhaustible. On the other hand, tritium is very rarely found in nature and is therefore only produced artificially, making it very expensive. However, scientists are working to mass produce it, lowering its cost. Injectors will shoot high-energy particles into the deuterium and tritium mix, heating up the fuel. Eventually, it will get to 150 million degrees Celsius, 10 times the temperature of the core of the sun. At this point, the deuterium and tritium particles will have so much energy that some of their electrons will escape and move around freely creating an electrically charged superhot soup of ions called plasma. Around the plasma will be 10,000 tons of magnets, equivalent to 49 Boeing 747s, that will create a torus-shaped magnetic field with a strength of 13 Tesla. That's 1,300 times the strength of a small bar magnet. Since plasma is electrically charged, it will follow the torus-shaped magnetic field lines, staying contained. Inside the plasma, it will be so hot that the repulsive forces between the particles will be broken, and they will fuse together to form a new particle called helium-4 and a high-energy neutron. This reaction is what powers all the stars in our universe, keeping them burning for billions of years. ITER's nuclear fusion plasma will produce an incredible amount of thermal energy, 500 megawatts, 10 times more than was used to heat it. At equal fuel mass, it will produce four times more energy than the nuclear fission reactions that power current nuclear power plants. And unlike fission reactors, ITER's radioactive waste will be very low to medium activity and short-lived, with all radiation diminishing within just 100 years. Lastly, a runaway reaction is impossible, making it significantly safer than a fission power plant. All of ITER's fusion science will be conducted in a highly complex tokamak system. A central chamber will hold the 12.4 meter diameter donut-shaped plasma. Around it will be blanket shields, absorbing the energy from the neutrons, while also protecting the rest of the machine from them, along with diverters, which will control the waste gas and impurities from the plasma. Around the blanket will be the vacuum vessel, which will serve as a safety containment barrier. Around the vacuum vessel will be the magnetic coils, and around them will be the cryostat, ensuring an ultra-cool vacuum environment. ITER will be highly complex, however, it will not be the first of its kind. Since the first tokamak in 1958, over a hundred small fusion reactors have been built. However, due to their sizes, they all use more energy than they create. The jet reactor in the UK 
produced a record 16 megawatts of thermal energy, but used 24 in the process. ITER's 50 megawatt input and 500 megawatt output will be revolutionary. Unfortunately though, as an experimental machine, it will not convert any of its power to electricity. However, if all goes well with ITER, another reactor called DEMO will be constructed. It would produce around 2 gigawatts of thermal power that would be absorbed by the walls of the reactor. This heat would then be transferred into steam that, through generators, would be translated into 800 megawatts of electric power, enough to supply 520,000 homes. Back in 2006, it was estimated that DEMO could make fusion energy available by 2033. Nowadays though, it would likely not be completed until the 2050s. And even if it was built, nuclear fusion would still have a long way to go. The costs and innovation required to make fusion a competitive, economic power source would be massive. In addition, like mentioned before, ITER will produce radioactive waste. The high energy neutrons that hit the reactor wall, transferring the thermal energy, will also induce radioactivity on it and nearby components. Eventually, this will create thousands of tons of radioactive material. Furthermore, some scientists believe that building a tokamak is the wrong approach, and that other designs are more logical. Lastly, many believe nuclear fusion is just a dream, and that ITER's billions of dollars of funding should be invested elsewhere. Still though, ITER is quickly progressing. In 2005, the project site was confirmed, and in 2007, the ITER organization was founded. In 2008, preparation for the construction site began, and in 2010, excavation began. Then, in 2013, construction of the massive ITER complex started. By 2017, the assembly hall was finished, and construction was 50% complete. Throughout 2018, 2019, and early 2020, the concrete support was formed and the cryostat began construction. Then, on July 28, 2020, French President Emmanuel Macron held a large celebration as assembly of the tokamak machine began. Over the next five years, the tokamak will be installed and all the necessary facilities will continue construction. In December 2025, ITER will have its first planned plasma. Testing will continue, and hopefully by 2035, it will begin using deuterium and tritium as fuel. If all goes well, DEMO will begin development. By the 2050s, we could have the first operational nuclear fusion power plant. However, there are still many obstacles, phases, funding issues, and feasibility concerns that need to be solved. For a while, fusion power has seemed only 30 years away. Whether ITER will finally break this cycle of delays and launch us into a new era of energy, we will just have to wait and see. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe for more videos very similar to this one. Also, remember to check out the comments and join the conversation. Thanks for watching and see you next time.